everyone. So uh, if you've been confused about what's going on with Russia, bots, and Trump, uh, you're not alone. It's a very crazy thing. I'm going to go fast, uh, and some of this stuff is very intense. So stay with me. But I got started with this when I dropped out of college when I was 20 to launch what was the first online voter registration system. It's a Facebook app, and you could register with no paper. Uh, and it would tell you which of your friends were registered to vote and which ones weren't. Um, but uh, the way you would prove your identity is your driver's license number. Uh, but the thing about that is that it's algorithmically generated. And any high school hacker could generate a script that could change the mailing address of hundreds of thousands or millions of voters without anyone knowing. And we told the Secretary of State about it, and they denied it until we threatened to go to the media, and then they finally fixed it. Um, and just last week, Harvard issued a report that it seems like Russia is testing similar techniques in 35 states to do registration spoofing uh, on voting systems. Um, shortly after that, I was asked by T. Boone Pickens to be the head of online organizing to build a million person army to make renewable energy a top campaign issue. Uh, I worked closely with some high level Democratic and Republican operatives, as well as some of the top PR and lobbying people from ExxonMobil. It was quite an experience for another time, story for another time. Um, last year, we were worried uh, that two engineers at Facebook could change the outcome of a presidential election. We cultivated sources inside of Facebook and reverse engineered the code review process and found out the answer was yes, that was possible. Um, and then when Trump got elected, uh, we did a five month investigation cultivating sources inside of Trump's campaign, Russian botnets, and found out that this wasn't just about bots, it was something larger at play. Uh, there was a bigger propaganda machine. But at its core, one of the researchers we work with identified it that they're capturing people and then keeping them on an emotional leash and never letting them go. And so it's not just fake news, it's recruiting voters into disinformation networks and getting them addicted. And it sounds kind of crazy, and BuzzFeed wrote two articles calling us conspiracy theorists uh, when we uh, wrote it in February. Uh, but as Pierre uh, uh, mentions, it's, it sounds like a conspiracy theory, but it's just effective marketing applied to politics, right? And Trump and his allies were able to weaponize it. They didn't have to be geniuses, but the guy at the uh, top of this, the funder, Robert Mercer, was a machine learning savant at IBM and then went on to launch uh, Renaissance Technologies, one of the, uh, the pioneers in algorithmic trading. Uh, and it's not just Cambridge. He owns uh, between six and seven companies doing data science and electioneering work. But at its core, it's important to understand it's a global electioneering platform that's demonstrating network effects. It's used in Brexit, the United States, Kenya, uh, uh, they're really focused on the uh, election in India uh, coming up. Um, but the question is, who's doing this? What's all going on? And there's three core actors. There's the alt-right autocrats, which Robert Mercer is one of them, Russia and fossil fuel. Let's talk about Russia and the fossil fuel industry. So when Russia invaded Crimea in 2014, Obama issued sanctions, which killed a deal between Exxon and Russia to develop their Arctic oil reserves. That deal was worth $500 billion, technically the largest business deal in history. And when you understand that Russia is less of a country and more of an oil and natural gas company with a standing army, you realize they had everything on the line, right? This fundamentally is a climate war. And to understand what's going to happen and what we need to do, you've got to realize it's a climate war. And right now, uh, pro-democracy forces aren't taking that into account. And it's an economic challenge and problem, not just a technological one. And people fighting back, it's really the tech resistance building startups and big data companies, but they're going up against a national business model. Right? They're not responsible to a localized business model. They can subsidize hundreds of thousands, uh, or hundreds of millions of dollars in research. Um, and it's, even if Russia and alt-right autocrats aren't necessarily working together, they're using the same old Soviet playbook, which is to harness and weaponize social, political, and economic tensions in society. Uh, in June, I was asked to brief the Senate Intel uh, Committee staff about how this kind of uh, um, coordination could be happening. Um, and I said, you got to go to Facebook. you got to look at the company's data. Facebook, in July, issued a statement saying um, that uh, we had no evidence of Russian uh, operatives buying political ads, which we now know uh, isn't, isn't true. Um, and the problem here is that despite all the money go coming in, we're bringing a knife to a space laser fight. And unless there's a radical change in strategy, 2018 might already be lost. And so what we need to do to start with is pro-democracy forces need to activate elite machine learning, cybersecurity, and automated marketing talent uh, and start doing it immediately. Um, and uh, it's important to understand this isn't just about politics, this isn't right or left, this is a war. And democracy is on the line. And the people in this room could have a, a role in fighting back. 
And so if you know people at Facebook or Google or Twitter or you're thinking about doing something, don't count on the NSA, DOD, or politicians to fix this problem. We're all in on this fight, and we all have to work together to make sure that we save democracy. Thank you.